hey friends <laughs> my hair's a little bit crazy my dogs decided that <clears throat> five minutes before it's time to do the video they need to go outside <laughs> and it's crazy windy out there but it is a beautiful morning <laughs> so just ignore my crazy hair okay <clears throat> anywho um i'm sarah satch welcome to coffee and crochet with sarah i'm super happy you're here um we do try to do this every tuesday 10 30 a.m central time so happy tuesday <laughs> i was rushing i felt like i was just running around <laughs> i guess i could use the exercise anywho how many of you got out yesterday and watched the eclipse okay so i didn't have the right glasses so my sister calls me or text me, she's in Broken Arrow, which is about two hours away. And she said, um, get outside, it's right above us now. And I was busy working, I didn't realize it had gotten kind of dark outside. So I grabbed these glasses, I put them over these, and I looked and I'm like, oh no, these are not going to work. Okay? So then I thought, well, I've got another pair of sunglasses, so I grabbed these. Yeah, they still didn't work. <laughs> I have very sensitive eyes, so I thought, you know what? I'm going to watch it on TV. There was actually a live YouTube um, stream that I watched that was super cool. And so I did get to see part of it. I kind of saw it at a glance, but I was too afraid just to look too long because I do have uh, thyroid eye disease, and I didn't want to, you know, go any more blind than I already am. So I already wear super thick glasses. <laughs> That's why I buy sparkly glasses, because it, it helps me at least understand if I'm going to pay a little more for a pair of glasses, they're going to have to be worth it, you know? <laughs> All righty, so let's clinkity clink clink in. I want to show you my cup. Can you read it? I was there, TCA class of 81 reunion. It's got a little... Um, placard hat there and then april 2024 this last week which by the way i'm just drinking regular old aldi coffee today with just a little bit of my sugar-free vanilla creamer in there i'm just in a mood for vanilla i really like vanilla anywho i had my class reunion it has actually been 42 years since i was married and 42 and a half years um, since our class reunion or since our class graduated from high school and um, it was so funny uh, we had one night where we just got together over at our friend's house over at Grand Lake um, in Oklahoma there and we had a big just kind of a party get together we had tacos and um, just a really fun time chatting and catching up with everybody and then the next day we had a get together um, we rented a, a building called Guts Church in Tulsa and had a really nice foyer, really pretty. And we all sat around. We played some fun games. My husband and I had to leave after that, but then there, there was also dinner. But I wanted to show you something. Um, one, of, one of my friends from high school that I've known since I was like nine years old, he comes in and he says, and he's talking and I hit him in the back. I said, hey. You know, and he's like, oh, oh, hi, Sarah. You know, then my husband and I started laughing and everything. And then my other best friend from high school, one of them anyway, her name's Kelly. He, she walked over and she's like, hey, you know, and he's like, wow, you really look just like you did from high school. And then he goes, unlike Sarah, she looks nothing like she did in high school. And I was like, huh. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. So I got out my yearbook and I want to show it to you guys. Let me click over here. <laughs> So here's our yearbook from 1981. This is senior year. I'm already marked the page in here. All right, this is my senior picture. Let's see if I can get it right into the camera there. There we go. Do I still look like my senior picture? <laughs> Maybe he was right, huh? <laughs> yeah. Lots of pounds <laughs> and life. I mean, it has been 42 years since we graduated from high school. So it was so much fun to get with everybody, though. It's, it's fun to see what everyone's done in their lives and hear about their kids and their grandkids and, and what they're doing. 
So that was a lot of fun. I just thought it was so funny. The other thing I wanted to tell you about, <clears throat> I had breakfast with my sister Gina Saturday morning, and we sat at this neat diner called Mom's Diner, and we sat there for four hours and talked. And she brought me this book. Um, let me come back over here. She found this at a um, at a thrift store, the Pioneer Woman Cookbook. But I wanted to show you something that was really cool. When I got it home and opened it up, I realized that it was a signed copy. Love from the Ranch Re. Re D. That's, that's her signature of the heart. And it's written in a Sharpie. I thought that was the coolest thing, isn't it? Y'all know I do like Pioneer Woman things. And I do like her cookbooks. And I don't have this one. And my sister found that. She actually bought three of them. There were three there. I don't know if the other two she got were signed. But that one that she gave me was. I was super excited about that. Okay, so. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm just laughing and laughing. You know, um. Uh, seeing the way people have changed, but really our class, I, I you know, we're all in, we're all like between 59 and 61, depending on, you know, our ages. I'm 61, um, you know, when your birthday falls and when you started school and stuff. And I would say for the most part, most of them still look really young, in my opinion. Um, some of the guys look older. <laughs> I had a really small graduating class. We had, I think, 25 and two have already passed, unfortunately, from cancer. But, um, uh, yeah, I thought everybody looked really good. I probably should see, um, let me show you, um, let's see if I left it on my iPad. No, I didn't leave the picture on there. Oh, well, you don't, you don't know these people anyway. You don't need to see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, I do have a shout out of the week this week. Um, this person is someone who was told me by another person who really likes her channel and the name, her name is Shannon and the name of her channel is the Spoonie Stitcher and I find her to be really enjoyable. I went and watched several of her videos. Most of them are pretty short, but, um, I, I just really liked her. She's, she has some chronic illnesses and she talks about how they don't get her down. She does her best and she's just really joyful and happy and I just really, really enjoyed her videos. Okay, I put, I'll put the link, I already put the link underneath this video when we're done watching down in that description box. It's called the Spoonie Stitcher. And if you go in and look at her very first video, she explains why she called it the Spoonie Stitcher, which I had no idea, and I thought it was pretty neat. Okay, the Spoonie Stitcher, her name is Shannon, and that's her YouTube channel. Go over there. Tell her I sent you, okay? Sarah Satch of Sarah Satch Designs sent you. <laughs> okay. Um, now I want to tell you about a yarn. This is not a new yarn. Um, but this is one that we used this week. We actually used it yesterday on yesterday's video. And I just love it. I've used some of it in the past. And I'm going to show it to you here on this other camera again. This is the Premier Sweet Roll Frosty. I love the names of all of these. This one's called Marzipan. And they're all medium weight, number four yarns. And they all have this little bit of a white model look going through it. Each skein has four different colors together. And let me tell you a little bit about it from what it says. I'm going to move my coffee real quick so I don't knock it over. You all know how clumsy I am. All right, so what it's there's 12 different colors, 100% acrylic, 5 ounces, which is 245 yards on each cake, medium weight, number 4 yarn. And this is what the, the Premier website says about it. A twist on the classic sweet roll. We all love the sweet roll cakes. This sweet roll frosty combines four colors in each ball with a unique dappled effect. And that's what they're calling this white that's go that's through it is a dappled effect and you'll see that on this right here how that stitches up okay um, the self striping yarn is designed to create wide stripes and regular repeat eliminating the need to weave in any ends um, there's 12 hues ranging from pastels to brights to neutrals 
It's perfect for all ages and wide ranges of projects. That's what they say on the website. And my opinion is that I just really like it. it it's a great yarn. It's nice and soft. And it worked out perfect for this blanket. And this is the blanket that we did yesterday. It's called the Rectangle. Let me see exactly. I changed the name. So it's a, it's called the, the Rectangle Peacock Granny Spring Throw Blanket. And I shortened it to just the Peacock Granny Blanket blanket <laughs> or granny blanket and it's just super pretty and it's a rectangle shaped blanket let me show you the center so you can see how we start it and I wrote this pattern about seven years ago and I used a different yarn the colorway that I used is no longer available so I thought since I uh, ordered in this beautiful sweet roll I ordered in three rolls and that it would be perfect to update this pattern and I just love it let me come to the other camera so I can show it to you better all right so this is the blanket if you turn it this way and it's called Pico because it has this Pico trim you see that it's super pretty it's a really easy pattern and it works up really fast and I, it's, I've used it several times if I've got someone that I found out just had a baby or they're just getting married. I'll whip them up a blanket really fast and they love it. They always, they've always loved this blanket. And because it is a rectangle, it makes a nice quick wrap and it fits perfectly over a chair or the couch. It also makes a really nice car blanket. I always say I like to keep a, a blanket in my car because you never know when the grandkids are going to get cold, <laughs> you know. And so um, the pattern's super easy. And again, all of my patterns that I show you on YouTube here, they all have a written pattern with pictures and extra notes that maybe I forgot to say in the video. Because sometimes, you know, in video editing or picture editing, sometimes I forget to say all the information. So you can always click underneath that video and or go underneath that video in that description box and click that link that takes you to the uh, the uh, blog that has all that information on it, all right? So never panic if you think I forgot something, or even if you think I misspoke. Sometimes in editing, I, I'll say double crochet instead of triple or something, and, and you'll think, hmm, I wonder why she said that right there. You can always go and look at the written pattern, and that will help as well, all right? So that this is our rectangle pico blanket or granny blanket okay it's on ravelry as well if you want to go and look at it there but i just i just love this yarn and i think it looks absolutely beautiful with this blanket i really really do and like i said they have neutral colors and bright colors and if you want to go and order some of it i put my affiliate link underneath this video as well but i think this would also look really beautiful in the ombre um because you start in the middle and you and you go out and you'll see those ombre colors kind of spin out. And I've done it with Red Heart Ombre, but I haven't tried the Premier Ombre, so I hope that you do. I did have someone email me this week saying they were using the Premier Ombre, so I'm looking really forward to seeing how theirs turns out. Okay, but the truth of the matter is, this is also a really great stash buster pattern. If you've got a bunch of medium weight number four yarns, and they, you don't know what to do with them, a bunch of like, you know, quarter and half skeins of yarn, make a scrap buster out of it because it's just one strand of medium weight number four and you can just keep on going with it. And it would work perfect for um, a scrap buster yarn project. All right. Um, the pattern, I can't remember. I think it takes between 10 and 12 ounces. I can't remember because I don't have the pattern written, you know, right here in front of me. But... If you want to make it bigger, of course, you're going to need more yarn. If you want to make it smaller, maybe make it a baby blanket, you'll need less yarn. So it's it's up to you. That's where you need to keep your tape measure handy and measure at... Oh, sorry. I pulled the wrong side. <laughs> measure as you go. This side won't pull. <laughs> That's the keychain side. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I tell you all the time, always have your tape measure handy. <laughs> all righty. So that was what we did yesterday. Then on Friday, we did Friday Fun Day, of course, and we made this tulip 
Let me look how I have it written on here. Tulip headband, cowl, and belt. Okay, and so what it is, is it only measures, I think, about four and a half inches across, and then you can make it as long as you want to. I'm going to lay it out here, so because I want you to see the pattern on this. This is so pretty. Move this stuff out of the way. I call it a tulip, because we did the tulip stitch, alternating between two rows of double crochet. And the tulip stitch is just V stitches with a four double crochet cluster in the chain two space. And you can see how easy it would be if you want to make it even wider to add more chains to make more tulips. Okay, and what I did is I had two half skeins of this cotton sprout. This one is just turquoise and this one here is island breeze. Isn't that beautiful? Let me move that one out of the way. And so I started with the turquoise and then I switched over to the island breeze. Now, you can do this several ways. You can leave the ends undone and use it as a headscarf or regular uh, cotton scarf, or you can put the ends together and make it into a nice summer cowl, or you can do a twist, and a lot of times I do that because it makes it lay better when you're wearing it so that it, then it becomes an infinity or scarf or cowl because it has that little twist there. And it's a great addition to any outfit for spring, summer, and even fall, or even winter, depending on what colors you wanna make it out of. And it was just super fun to make. And you can see how those tulips just stand right out because we put, when we did our row of double crochets, we put two in each of those chain one spaces in between, and it causes that tulip to just pop right out of the pattern and that's why it's such a fun and easy pattern and I love it and I love how the two played together and again this is another way where you can use um, yarns that you have in your yarn stash I did this out of cotton it's a medium weight number four but if you want to do it out of acrylic say you've got some leftover acrylics use acrylics it may not be as lightweight you know as a cotton but you can still do it with acrylics okay the thing about substituting fibers that you know that you can do is if you're going to do the whole project in that one fiber, you can you can use different colors, but I wouldn't recommend like mixing cotton and wool or cotton and acrylic or acrylic and wool unless it is blended in together throughout the whole entire project. In other words, if you were to do a strand of say of wool and cotton together, you know that might work okay but you have to think about when it gets wet wool felts or shrinks cotton puffs up <laughs> you know and so you have to keep those things in mind when you're putting fibers together all right and so what I really recommend that you don't mix your fibers that if you're gonna make it in acrylic make it all in acrylic if you're gonna make it in wool make it all in wool if you're gonna make it in cotton make it all in cotton okay so Anyway, um, <clears throat> that's what we did. And then we had one other thing that we did last week, and that was our this and that question. And I talked about um, chaining two, chaining three, or using the standing double crochet. And it was really quite funny because I had several people who told me I did it wrong, that there were other ways of doing it. And one thing you have to remember is, you know, just because I do a chain one, and then do this or don't do the chain one that doesn't make it wrong it just makes it different and you have to do what works best for the project that you're working on a lot of times I will do the uh, do a chain one just as a turning chain and then do the standing double crochet it just depends on what works best for you and the project that you're working on what we were trying to accomplish by uh, doing the this and that question last week with the standing double crochet is eliminating that hole that sometimes happens when you do a chain three that counts as your first double crochet sometimes I like having that as part of the pattern but if you're not going to put a trim on something, say you're going to do a big wide scarf, but you don't want to put a trim or maybe a big wide wrap, but you don't want to go back around and add a single crochet trim or something, then you don't want those big gaping holes. And you can stitch that chain three tighter, tighten up your tension on just those chain threes, 
or you could chain two and then turn. Or you can do, t uh, you know, the uh, double single crochet, or you could do the standing double crochet. There are lots of ways of doing it. I was just showing you the way I was taught how to do the standing double crochet. And one thing to remember about me <laughs> is it's now been about 50 years since I learned to crochet. And I do everything old school. I, there's a lot of new techniques I've learned, and I do those also. But I always rely on those old school techniques. And those, so those are the ones that I'm going to show you and teach you. But also, it doesn't make it wrong if you want to do it a different way. It just makes it different. You know, and, and I've said this many, 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 many times, <laughs> that crochet is an ever-changing art. And there are lots of fun and different ways to do it. You don't have to do it exactly the way one, two, or three, or all designers tell you to. You do it your way and how it works best for the pattern or the project that you're working on. Okay? And I wanted to really talk about that because one girl was so upset because she said, I've been doing it this way, and now I've learned a new way, and I don't know which way to do it. And that's why I said, it's okay. Don't, don't panic. Do what works best for you. You know, if you've always done it this way, keep doing it that way. If you've always done it a different way, keep doing it that way. <laughs> you know? All right. So now our, our this and that video for tomorrow is a little bit different. And we're going to talk about um, the changing seasons and what, what we like to crochet in the changing seasons. And it's just a little bit just fun and, and just a fun uh, video. Um, that I had some people, what I, what I do, okay, is people will message me about questions. And so what I try to do is I make a list of all those different questions, and then I do my best to try to answer those questions in our this and that videos, okay? Now, a lot of times I get questions that I've already answered, and so then I'll just send them the link to the video that I've already uh, answered that question in. All right, so if you ask me a question... And I've already um, covered that. I'll either tell you when you when you send it to me, or if you if you post it somewhere, that the um, it's already been answered. And go look here or go look there. Um, and if you don't know exactly, sometimes sometimes they're not sure how to ask the question, you know, or 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 you know how to because techniques are hard, you know. Sometimes is it a yarn over and a yarn under or what in the world is a front post or what's a back post what part of the stitch is the post you know things like that and if you go back and you can look in my playlist for this and that questions or crochet techniques and look in there and you might find some of those questions because I might call it one thing and somebody else calls it something else because <laughs> a lot of newer crocheters have changed the names of stitches um, because I don't know why, <laughs> you know, they change the names of techniques or the way of doing things. And it's okay. I don't care if they want to change it to whatever. I don't care as long as they're crocheting because, you know, everybody needs to crochet, <laughs> you know. So anywho, thank you, Tina. I, I, I agree with you. There's nothing wrong with being old school. And so what, what I try to do in my thinking is, yes, I'm old school. But I also still know there are tons of things that I can learn. And so I try to be open to learning new things about crochet. That's why I say we are never experts. We have never hit the point where we know everything. Because just about the time we think we are, something new comes on the block. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's something new. And I love that. I love learning all the new things. Hang on, two seconds. Okay, <laughs> I get a little dry because I talk too much. <laughs> I, I, um, uh, that's something else I was talking about with um, some of my friends from high school because they said um, when they first met me, I was really, really shy, and I was. And then they said after they got to know me, they're like, boy, she talks a lot. <laughs> Because that's just kind of the person that I am. You know, I, I'm not real talkative until I get to know the area, the situation, what's going on. And then once I feel comfortable, then I start talking to everybody's leg off. <laughs> so, yes, I love that, Lisa. Learning is for life. I love that. <clears throat> that's why I never say practice makes perfect. 
I always say, when it comes to crochet, practice makes confidence. And confidence gives you, you know, when you feel confident in what you're doing in your art or your craft, whether it's beading, crochet, knitting, painting, the more confident you feel, the better you will become because you'll feel more confident in your style and your stitches. And you'll love that when somebody gives you a compliment, you're more willing to say, oh, thank you, not, oh, well, there's a mistake here and there. No, I don't point out your mistakes. They love what you made them and then just say, thank you, it was made just for you. And that was really hard for me as well. I have sewn and crocheted and knit and painted all kinds of crafts my whole life. Uh, you know, ever since I can remember, I was drawing and, and coloring and, you know, always loved it. And, and, and the more you do it, the more confident you will feel. And you'll feel happy when you give something to someone. Now, in saying that, if you work really hard at something um, for a gift and you give it to someone and they go, oh, I had someone do that to me recently and it kind of surprised me. And then they complained because it had holes in it. And I said, but it's a shawl, <laughs> you know, it's to wrap over your shoulders to look pretty, <laughs> you know, and, and they did thank me later, you know, <laughs> but, but it was just like, Okay, you know, so don't let that get you down. You know, at the moment it might like, you know, oh, okay, but that's okay. <laughs> don't let it get you down. Keep loving what you do. And if others don't understand it or don't love it, that's their issue, not yours. <laughs> All righty, we're right about 11 o'clock. I'm going to look through here, see if I covered everything. It looks like it. I do have a fun project for Friday as well that I think you're going to enjoy. Um, it's We're going to be using some leftover cotton, medium weight number four. If you've got some leftover cottons, medium weight number four, doesn't take much. That's what we're going to be using on Friday for our Friday fun project. Okay, so that's all I've got. <laughs> The last thing I want to leave you with, though, is don't forget that we announced what the April, can you believe it's April? How did that happen? Anywho, what April giveaway is, we announced what it was in last week's video, live video on Tuesday. So if you weren't didn't get a chance to see it, go back in the playlist on my YouTube channel, go to the live videos, there's a little link up there that says live, click that. And watch last week's live video, and then you and all you have to do to be entered into the giveaway is just to comment. And I always tell people you don't have to find some flowery way to comment. All you have to do is say, I want to win. <laughs> you know, because we take all the names, we put them in that Google random generator. Whoever name comes up, we check to make sure you haven't won in the last year or so, and then it's you. It doesn't matter where you live. <laughs> anywhere okay and then next week on next week's live video I'm going to announce the winner and what it is is it's one of those crochet kits it's a little I think it's a bumblebee if I remember right yes and then you're also going to get one of my canvas canvas coffee and crochet with Sarah bags so make sure you go watch last week's video and comment on last week's video okay because if it, 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 you aren't in the drawing on this week's video the with the comments, although I do love reading your comments, but you have to comment on last week's live video uh, to be entered. Okay. All righty. So it's right at 11 o'clock. So I'm going to let you go. Have a wonderful, wonderful week.